Vincent Freeman is a naturally born, also known as invalid, child who dreams of becoming an astronaut and going to Gattaca, the only chance to go into space. His parents, Antonio and Marie Freeman, chose to forego the services of science for their first child, preferring to leave it to chance. However, at birth, his profile is instantly evaluated by a computer from a drop of blood, indicating that the child is prone to severe heart conditions that limit his life expectancy to around 30 years. Upon learning this news, the father chooses to name him differently than planned. Challenges arise for the parents in this new selective society, where schools now reject the admission of natural children, deemed at risk. The couple unsurprisingly decides to turn to science for their second child, Anton, who becomes the subject of genetic manipulations meant to protect him from chance. The result lives up to their expectations. Throughout their childhood, the two brothers are constantly in competition, regularly challenging each other in swimming. Anton usually wins, favored by his genetic profile. As an adult, Vincent, who still dreams of space, discreetly leaves his home. His genetic handicap confines him to the role of a janitor at Gattaca, under the command of Caesar. Forced to gaze at the skies from the roofs of Gattaca, he decides to break the rules by becoming a genetic pirate or degenerate. He turns to a trafficker to access his dream. In exchange for 20 to 25% of his income, he connects with a fallen valid. Jerome Eugene Morrow, a former swimming champion, was a promising individual with all the required genetic qualifications, but, tormented by his failures, he only achieved second places. He attempted suicide by crossing a road in front of a car. He survived but lost the use of his legs, and since the accident happened abroad, the incident remained undisclosed. As a paraplegic and alcoholic, he rents out his body and identity to Vincent by providing biological samples, bags of blood and urine, hair, dead skin, etc., to pass the numerous DNA analyses and tests required for Gattaca personnel. In return, Vincent allows him to maintain the same standard of living as before the accident. To become Jerome and counteract his nearsightedness, Vincent wears contact lenses of the right color, changes his hairstyle and hair color, meticulously cleans and refines every part of his body every day, undergoes rigorous psychological and physical training. He even undergoes orthopedic surgery to lengthen his shins by 5 centimeters. Vincent succeeds in his job interview with Dr. Lamar, thanks to a simple urine analysis, supposed to detect drugs, and joins Gattaca as an astronaut trainee, where, thanks to his determination, he becomes the best space navigator in the company. Amidst his work, frequent medical tests, outings with Eugene, the name now used by Jerome to simplify matters while Vincent goes by Jerome, he leaves traces of his false identity and erases real clues to ensure his safety. Irene Cassini, his colleague, despite her perfect conception, she suffers from heart problems, seems secretly in love with Vincent, but she is shy due to her genetic imperfection. She believes Vincent is too perfect and will, therefore, reject her. She secretly conducts a DNA test on Jerome by stealing a hair from him and finds that he is indeed genetically perfect because the hair actually belongs to Jerome. She confesses what she did and, in turn, gives him one of her hairs, telling him that if, after the analysis, he is still interested in her, he knows where to find her. But Vincent lets the hair drop to show her that he doesn't value genetic perfection. They are starting dating each other. A week before leaving Earth for Titan, one of Saturn's moons, the mission director, who oversees projects and launches, is murdered. The police, including Anton, quickly start searching and scrutinizing every fiber, scale, or eyelash that could be found at the crime scene to determine the identity of the one who left them behind and thus expose the perpetrator. The investigators find an eyelash belonging to an invalid who used to do cleaning, Vincent. It's worth noting that, according to DNA analysis, Vincent was supposed to die at 30 years and 2 months, but he has surpassed that age, creating confusion in the investigation as his traces are regularly found by an eyelash and saliva on a cup. Continuing as before but now exercising greater caution, Vincent deepens his relationship with Irene, evades the police through his dual identity, and outwits Lamar's tests and the investigators through subtle maneuvers. Anton, accompanied by Irene, goes to Jerome's place to verify his identity with a blood test. The test shows a valid result and then Anton has to leave because he gets informed that they found the real killer. Irene doesn't recognize the Jerome she loves, meaning Vincent, but the real Jerome. This leads to a confrontation between Irene and Jerome, followed by a tumultuous scene of explanations between Vincent and Irene, to whom he confesses his secret and his real name, 
The investigation concludes. Deputy Director Joseph is arrested by Detective Hugo. His motive? The launch window for Titan occurs only once every 70 years, and the mission director wanted to cancel everything. By killing him, Joseph ensured that the launch would proceed as planned. The murderer had no genetic predisposition for violence in his profile. The director killed in a completely rational manner and shows no remorse. The search for the invalid is abandoned as unnecessary. Anton accuses Vincent of his imposture after recognizing him. He is jealous of his supposedly inferior brother who has surpassed him. Anton then issues a new swimming challenge. During the challenge, Vincent reveals his secret to beating Anton, never saving strength for the return, showing that his willpower and individual character were decisive in his victories. In this final challenge, Vincent wins again and also saves Anton from drowning. Shortly before the departure, the reconciled Vincent and Irene meet again. He gives her a hair for a DNA test to prove his previous claims, but she reacts as he did before, dropping the hair to make him understand that she doesn't care about his genetic heritage. Then he announces to her that he is leaving for Titan. Back at Jerome's place, Vincent notices that the equipment for sample preparation has been covered with plastic sheets. Jerome then shows him the samples he prepared in large quantities. He justifies it by saying that he is also going on a journey and that Vincent might need them upon his return from the mission. He hands him an envelope urging him to open it only once he's up there. At Gattaca, just before departure, Vincent must undergo a final surprise urine analysis. Having nothing to cheat his identity, he accepts his failure fatalistically. His invalid identity in the name of Vincent is revealed to Dr. Lamar, who still validates the result in the name of Jerome. Dr. Lamar apparently has known the truth for a long time, but chose to keep it a secret because his own son is in a situation similar to Vincent's. He says, My son admires you a lot. He would like to enter Gattaca one day. Unfortunately, my son is is not all they promised. However, who knows what he could do, right? He lets him go toward the corridor that leads to the rocket. Vincent boards the rocket, which takes off into the stars, while Jerome commits suicide in his home incinerator, where his silver medal turns to gold in the flames. During the liftoff, Vincent opens the envelope and finds a lock of Jerome's hair. He keeps it to remember the man who enabled him to fulfill his dream. That was Gattaca, a dystopian science fiction drama thriller from 1997. I hope you enjoyed this recap and I look forward to our next encounter. If you want to see more recaps of cult films like this, just subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.